Hello and welcome to Block Based Programming in Scratch by Cotivate. This is lesson 5. Today we're going to talk about conditionals. So, before we actually talk about what conditionals are, let's take a look at this program here. So, when the cat looks to the right and you click the green flag, it says, I'm looking right. But then when it's looking to the left, it says, I'm looking left. So somehow this cat knows which direction it's facing. And the way it's doing that is through conditionals, which we're going to talk about today. So, in order to understand conditionals, we first need to understand what a Boolean is. A Boolean is a true or false expression. Something like, is 7 equal to 8 is a Boolean. That is, the computer will give you no, will give you false. And if you say, is 7 less than 8? That's also a Boolean expression, that the computer will give you true or false. That's the, the idea, is if you ask it to someone, you will get true or false. That's what a Boolean expression is. And the whole idea is that there's only two possible answers, true or false. So in Scratch, it looks like these like diamondy blocks, where you have two slots for numbers, and you have an operator in the middle. You can have an equal sign or you can have a less than or a greater than sign. And what happens is when you click on these, they tell you whether they're saying false or true. And they'll say true when the statement inside of them is true and false otherwise. So for example, is 50 equals 50? That's true, but 49 equals 50? That's false. And similarly, you have less than and greater than. They do basically the same things, but with less than and greater than. So, using these booleans, what we can do is we can um, get the computer to do one thing if the boolean returns true, and another thing if it returns false. So, by return, I mean when, they s when I click on it, it like tells you true or false. This one says false, and this one says true. The computer will do different things depending on whether it says true or false. And we can use we use something called a conditional to do that. And we can draw out a conditional to visualize what the code is doing, like this. So for example, we have a question, that's our Boolean. And then if it's true, do the green thing. If it's not true, skip the green thing. That's what this uh, diagram is showing us. So in a more concrete example, we have is some number. We, we have some magic number. We don't know what it is yet. Is it equal to 50? And if it is, say it's equal to 50. And if it's not, then skip that. And then after you've decided whether you're skipping or doing, end the program. That's it. All right. Then we have something else here. Now, this is slightly different. Instead of just skipping, instead of just deciding whether or not we're skipping the green thing, we're now deciding whether or not we're doing the green thing or something else. So instead of just skipping it, we're doing something else entirely. And in this case, it's say the number is equal to 50 is the yes, and then say that number is not equal to 50 is the no. And either way, regardless of which one it does, they come back to the same place. They branch out, but then they come back. So we can do more than just two options, actually. We can do like three or four. and the way we do that is to uh, stack, is to ask questions in the other questions. So basically, we can't just have three arrows branching off from one box, but we can have something that I can't really explain. I'll just show you the picture. So here, we have question one, question two, question three. So if the question one, say question one is like, is, is the number equal to 50? Then the thing one will be, say 50 is equal to 50, just like we have up here. This is a question one, this is do thing one. Question one, do thing one. Then question two is, okay, we know it's not equal to 50, so is it greater than 50? If it is, say it's greater than 50. Well, if it's not equal and it's not greater, is it less than 50? That's gonna be our question three. And if it is, say it's less than 50. Um, when we, with this number example, we don't have a fourth thing to do, but we can stack this as many or as little as we want. That's the idea. So moving on to actual scratch, 
we can't because you know we can't just draw these arrows in our scratch program we have this block up here and it's called the if block and we can actually uh, draw exactly where each of our things are from this diagram onto this if block so we have if question question this hexagon thing is that uh, diamond shaped block I showed you earlier where you have two numbers and the operator so if it's true then do something so if this question here is true then go to the green go to the yes go where the yes is pointing and the, the yes this green box this do something is going to go in our middle so we would put if 50 is equal to 50 say it and then after that it does the next thing regardless of whether it ran this or not because what's gonna happen is if the boolean is false it's just gonna go to the no section and the no section is just skipping this and going to the next thing so here's an example of it working so we have when green flag clicked we have an if statement if 5 is equal to 5 well 5 is indeed equal to 5 so it's going to do it the first time and it's gonna print out that statement the second time it says if 4 is equal to 5 say 4 is equal to 5 but this gives us false and when it says if and then this thing gives us false nothing happens it skips that if statement now that might be a problem for us because we don't want the program to do nothing when we ask it is 4 is equal to 5 we want it to say no it's not and I'll show you how to fix that in just a little bit we can do some more examples with this we can say we have some unknown number and actually we can in a future lesson like a few lessons from now we're going to figure out how to make this number change depending on when we run the program um, but that's further along the road basically you want to figure out what's gonna happen when I press the green flag depending on what some number is so in this case some number if it's greater than 50 it's gonna move 30 steps and if it's less than 50 or equal to 50 it's not going to do anything and that that is the answer that you're looking for here so to fix this problem of the cat uh, not telling us um, whether a number was equal to 5 or not we can actually uh, get the program to do this uh, diagram here where we have the red block as well and the way we do that is with this else block so it's just like the if block this if question then do thing one exactly the same as before but now we have this else tagged onto it which is just the no side so really it's if the thing is true go to the yes arrow and do what's there otherwise since if it's not yes then it has to be no it's going to do the thing two and thing two goes here so we just have like an extra slot to put our exclusive for the no option there and the important thing to note here is that exactly one of these two things is going to run each time and every time so here's what it would look like in the actual code so we have if 4 is equal to 5 say 4 is equal to 5 if it's not say 4 is not equal to 5 and in let me just wait for it so 4 equals 5 say 4 is equal to 5 say 4 is not equal to 5 so we click it it says 4 is not equal to 5 because it's tr false so it skipped to the else statement this time it's gonna the second time it's true so it goes to the first one because that's what the yes is and it skips the second one because that was the no option we don't want to do the no option and the yes option we only do one of them so only one of these two blocks happens, these purple blocks, depending on whether this uh, green thing says true or false. So if we wanted to make a program like this diagram right here, how could we do that? Well, we know how to make this diagram here. So we can just put this diagram inside of itself, kind of. And I'll show you what I mean by that right here now this is, looks complicated I know but it's actually less complicated than it is because really it's almost as simple as the diagram you have question one if it's that do, do the thing question one if it's that do the thing otherwise 
in everything's inside of the otherwise. And in this, every everything that follows after the no is inside of this no section. So everything's inside of this no here. Question two, do you think two? Okay, it's not, so otherwise. Question three, do you think three? Otherwise, do you think four? So it's just a sequence of if it's this, do that. Otherwise, check if it's another thing and do that. Otherwise, check if it's another thing, do that. Otherwise, and then there's some default at the very end. That's kind of how it works. So here's an example. We have this. Say I can put whatever number I want in here, and since it gets a little bit hard to rewrite, you could see in the other GIFs there was a lot of rewriting happening. Say I have some number, and if the number's greater than 50, it's going to say the number's greater than 50. And then, if it's not greater than 50, it's going to check, okay, is it less than 50? Then it's going to say less than. And then if it's not greater than, and it's not less than, it has to be equal to. So we just say equal to. And that's how it works. That's, this is an example of a three option if statement. So instead of just two options with just an if and an else, we have three. We have an else, and we have an if else, if else kind of thing. In programming, they're generally called else if things, like because we have an else followed by an if here. But that's really not important. What's important is that we can give it many options to choose from. Only one of these three purple blocks is ever going to run. And we can see why, because if the first one runs, it skips everything in this elf, in this else here. So that's the, r the other two. So if this one runs, the other two don't run. And if this one doesn't run, then this else runs. And in this else, we just have a regular if else, which we know only one of them run. So it's either this one runs and neither of these two run, or this one doesn't run and one of these two runs. So w only one will run at the end. So here's what it looks like in action. You'll see the person trying to type out all the numbers, and they have to actually make this simplify by just saying greater than instead of saying the number is greater than 50. And we'll get to how to fix that later. It's slightly annoying to do, but we'll get to it at like the last lesson because it's not actually that important. It's just formatting. Oh, it's actually right here. Never mind. <laughs> I thought I put it further. So we have this ask block, which just makes the cat say a thing, and it actually allows the user to input. So the user will input, let's say they, they typed 5 there, so if the answer is equal to 5, it'll say equal to 5. If it's not, it'll say it's not. So if they type 5, it's going to say equal to 5. And in the second time, they typed 37, and it said not equal to 5. That's basically how it works. You can actually make the cat say your answer inside of this, but that uses another block that we haven't learned yet. All right. So now that we know what conditionals are, we can answer the question of, what is the cat, how does the cat know where it's pointing? And it's just an if-else statement. That's, we, we can figure that out because there's only two options that it does. And we can actually use this direction bubble. It's, you can find it somewhere. Let me pull it up really quick. Scratch, create. You can find it on the left side where the movement blocks are, right here. You can find it right here, direction, and it will tell you where the cat's pointing. So in this case, it's 90, but and when it's left, it's n oh, almost negative 90, but it's going to be negative 90. So you know negative 90 is left, positive 90 is right. So we can use an if statement to say if direction is equal to 90, then it must be right. And if direction is equal to negative 90, then it must be left. And that is exactly what it is. This is the code for the original thing. So we have if direction is 90, say I'm looking right. Else, say I'm looking left. There's one problem with this, though, and it's the fact that 
if the angle, if the cat's pointing at like an angle that's not left or right, it says that it's pointing left because we have this simple, if it's not 90, then it has to be, if it's not right, then it has to be left. We can fix that by instead of having an if else, we just have two ifs next to each other. And that's how that works. And that essentially allows us to have uh, two different options that don't have to each happen. They can, neither of them can happen, both of them can happen, and only one of them can happen necessarily because they're not tied to each other in any way. All right, we're just gonna do some practice now with these. So first thing is write a program where this cat asks for a number and then tells you whether the number is equal to seven. So this is asking you to use the ask block from earlier. I'll let you pause it at your own will and do it and I'll show you the answer. So here's the answer. You ask it for a number and the answer bubble, right, I didn't show you where the answer bubble is. It is right here, right? It's in the sensing area. That's where the ask and the answer are. So you put that answer, you say, okay, you ask the computer, is it equal to seven? And if it is, it's gonna do this. If it's not, it's gonna do that. So if it is, it's equal to seven. If it's not, say it's not equal. And that's, that's the answer. Now this cat checks whether it's on the left side or the right side. Now we can use these bubbles here. These, these are actually numbers, this x position and y position. They tell you where the cat is. So the x position, remember the coordinate plane, the further to the right you are, the more positive your x position is. And the further to the left you are, the more negative your x position is. So if you're trying to figure out where uh, you are left or right, you can check whether the x position is negative or positive, like this. So if it's less than zero, or sorry, if it's greater than zero, which means positive, it's on the right side. If it's less than zero, then it's negative, so it's on the left side. And if it's neither greater nor less than, it has to be exactly equal to zero, which would be the middle. Next thing, write a program where the cat asks for a password, and if the user types the correct password, which in this case is the password is password, it will say correct, and if it's not, it'll say access denied. So this is me showing you that uh, you don't necessarily need numbers, you can compare words as well. So we can just say, what's the password? If your answer is equal to the word a password, because we have a pretty bad password here, the password is password. If they get the correct password, then say correct. Otherwise, they didn't get it right, so access denied. Now, different, different way, instead of figuring out what the code is, you're figuring out what the code does. So we have ask, direction, and wait. If answer is up, change y by 30. If answer is down, change y by negative 30. Notice, remember, this is if, and then everything else is in the else. If everything else is in the else. If everything else is in the else. So really, this is just picking one of these options, and one of them will be picked. So they ask for a direction. So if your answer is equal to up, so if you type up enter when they ask you for what direction, it'll do this one. If you type down, it'll do this one. If you type left, it'll do this one. If you type right, it'll do this one. And if you don't type any of these words, it'll say that's not a direction. So here's what happens. This person typed up, the cat moved up. They typed right, the cat moved right. They typed left, the cat moved left. They typed down, the cat moved down. They typed some th something else, and the cat just complained. That's basically what that's trying to do. So you can actually make controls now for your cat by typing. And that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.